here to show you another fun song. This is going to be a fun one today. Really, really looking forward to teaching this song today. One of, I always say this every week, one of my favorite songs, but that's true. But that's why we do the riff rundown because I teach you guys my favorite songs that I love to play on acoustic and electric and guitar. So today, what we're going to be learning is the acoustic version of My Hero by the Foo Fighters. All right from their live album, Skin and Bones. One of my favorite versions of this song. So we're gonna be going over that today. Gonna to be a blast, really excited here. Have your acoustic guitar, so it's an acoustic version of this tune. Have your acoustic guitar, standard tuning here. As always, I like to know where you guys are tuning in from. So let me know that. And a concert that you had tickets to and gave those tickets to someone else and you regret not going to that show. So let me know where you're tuning in from and a show that you regret missing. So, here we go, here's my hero. That's the tune we're going to be going over today. Obviously, there's some other parts. Don't worry. There's some other licks and stuff, riffs. We're going to throw that in there, too, because it's the riff rundown. Thank you all for tuning in. Oh, my gosh. We're getting lots of, lots of good comments about missed concerts, which we will absolutely talk about um, <laughs> in a bit. This is so cool. So, again, folks who are tuning in, acoustic guitar, have that ready. Uh, in standard tuning, we're going to be learning My Hero by the Foo Fighters, a nice, really cool acoustic version of this song. Really, really great version. So we will be going over that today. So, oh, this is so fun. Really, really looking forward to this. Okay, so what we're gonna do here, let's go ahead and get started. Major chord, right? We're gonna start with that E chord. So those of you, my beginners, you should know how to play this chord, but let's talk about it again real quick here. First finger, place that on the first finger of that G string. It's gonna be the G sharp, or also known as the third of this E major chord. Get your second finger, put that on the second fret of that A string. That's going to be your B note. And then your third finger, place that right there on the E note, second fret of that D string. Strum everything. So that's the chord you want there. Nice beginner chord. It's a good one, right? But this one, why I'm kind of calling this tune for my intermediates, my beginners? Stick around though, there's gonna be some cool stuff here. We're gonna be switching between an open chord and this really cool and beautiful sounding bar chord. Let's go ahead and talk about what's happening here. So, this chord here, and by listening to the live version, I'm basing this off of the live version from their Skin and Bones album from the Pantages in Los Angeles. So that's a concert I am bummed that I missed out on. I think I had a gig that night and I couldn't go, but that's, I was gonna go to the Pantages show and then they ended up filming it and I'm like, I should have went to that show. So, <laughs> so we're doing this, this, this song <laughs> from that concert today. So going to this chord here by listening back to that version really sounds like Dave is, is getting that first finger and putting it across all the strings when he's going to play that C sharp chord, okay? I was hearing that G sharp on top, so we're including it here today. So what I want you to do to play this chord, so you're gonna get your first finger, you're gonna put that across all six strings of the guitar, okay? So at the fourth fret. Put that finger across everything. Again, using these frets here, whenever I talk about bar chords, 
using those frets, be perpendicular. Your I don't want to. I don't want to see this when you're doing bar chords. I don't want to see this, right? So nice and straight. We really want to make sure that our finger is perpendicular with that fret. So remember that when you're practicing this. Okay. So put that finger across all six strings. You're going to get your third finger. You're going to place that right here on the sixth fret of the D string. D is in dog. Your pinky finger. Put it just underneath sixth fret of the G string. Okay. And now here you're going to strum everything. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the notes that are happening here. What's the name of this chord? All that good stuff. So this is going to be a C sharp sus2 over G sharp, because remember we have the G sharp up here on the root. So if we're talking about the notes in general, what's happening here? G sharp, you have your C sharp, you have your other G sharp, where your third finger is, right? Sixth fret of that D string. Pinky finger, that's playing your other C sharp right? Octaves, yay. So there that is, okay? Then here, that's your sus too. That's that D sharp. And then you have the G sharp on the bottom, okay? So we play that. Really, really beautiful chord. So that's the chord we're going back and forth with, with that E chord. So what we're going to do here at varying speeds, let's just get a feel for this, okay? Going back and forth between the E major and the C sharp sus two over G sharp. It's a mouthful, you guys can play it. All right, so here we go, back and forth between those two. Okay, so here we go. So that's what we're doing there. Now what I'm going to do now, I'm going to play it a little bit faster. Again, what I want to mention with the right hand, nice and light. I'm using, I usually use 0.88 picks most of the time. With this one, I'm, I'm going a, a step lighter. I'm using a 0.76 um, gauge pick, weight pick, whatever you want to, whatever you want to call it. That's or, or plectrum, whatever part of the world you're tuning in from. Um, so I'm, I'm using a 0.76 for this. I know I get a bunch of questions about strings and picks. That's the gauge string or the gauge pick that I'm using today. It's a 0.76. So let's go ahead again. Let the pick do the work for you. This is stuff that I've mentioned in previous lessons here. Nice, big, wide strums. We really want the sustain of the guitar to really, really sing through here. Okay. So I don't really like to do it through the wrist. If that's what makes you comfortable, that's that's fine for me. I like to I like to have a little bit wider of a strum. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that again, nice and slow here, and then we'll we'll, we'll speed it up a bit. And again, when you're going to that C sharp, right? Let that first finger lead and then place the rest of the chord there. And really press through with that thumb. Again, notice you can't see my thumb when I'm playing that bar chord. It's really important that that thumb is in, in the back of the neck, okay? And really pressing through with that first finger and the rest of the fingers on your hand. Okay, so good placement of that thumb. So that's what's happening there. Now let's go ahead and talk about that iconic riff that we hear. I'll do it a little slower here. And then to speed. So let's talk about how we get our hands around this one. All right, so what we're gonna do here, you're gonna put your first finger on that F sharp second fret of the E string, just like that. Use your first finger. Now, I like to grab that C sharp with my pinky. If you find that you like to do it better with third finger, that's all right too. So that's the next one. Okay, third finger or fourth. Then you're gonna go to your B note, second fret of that A string, okay? Then grab that G sharp fourth fret of the E string, okay? Now, keep in mind, do your best to alternate pick this. Okay. So let's do that a few times here. Because again, it's kind of like a crisscross kind of riff. Right? Or 
crisscrossing those fingers. <laughs> so let's go ahead and go back and forth between these. Again, varying speeds, alternate picking here. That's what we want to do. So here we go. Again. Let's do this a few more times. Again, take your time here, folks. Let me do that a little cleaner. All right, so that's what we're looking for here. Do it a little faster. Again, repetition. It's always good to alternate pick stuff like this really makes these notes, these sequence of notes, riffs, sound a lot smoother. So keep up the good work here with the alternate picking. Again, really, really good technique that is vital for so many things in guitar playing, all right? Now, at the end of that little crisscrossy riff, right? What we're gonna do now is we're gonna play this A5 chord. We're gonna use our first finger to do this. Here's how we do it. You're gonna get your first finger here, place it on the second fret, right? That D string. And also hold down the second fret of that G string too. Okay, so that's your A. And right here, second fret of the D string, that is your E. Now, let the open A string ring as well. So that should be the full chord there, like that. All right, so now we're gonna do here, we're gonna play the riff, and then we're gonna add that final chord at the end. Okay, so here we go, again, varying speeds, and let's do this. Notice how that first finger goes right down. We just played that B note and then go down with that with the A chord, okay? Let's do that cleaner. <laughs> We're live, folks. We're live. Faster. Now, as you get more comfortable with this, notice how I was adding in those little strums in there. Build up to that, all right? Build up, because again, we're filling the space here. When you're first starting this, you're more comfortable doing this. Playing it a little cleaner then, all right, I'm starting to get the hang of this, starting to feel natural, great. Then add in that, those, those little filler strums, okay? So. Let's go ahead. I'm going to do that with those filler strums so you can really, really see that and highlight it and then incorporate it in your own playing. So here we go. At the end of that A. See that? Let's do that again. Nice big E chord at the end. Just like that, okay? So now what we're gonna do here, we're gonna do that intro, right? Our E to that C sharp sus2 over G sharp. <laughs> and then to our riff, to the, the A power chord, finishing it with E. All right, again, I'm gonna do this at varying speeds. And after this section here, I'm gonna take a few questions. I'm gonna read some of your guys's. Uh, <laughs> concerts that you're bummed that you missed out on or tickets that you sold that you wish you didn't so uh so let's go ahead and do this from the top everybody Keep in mind too, we're gonna hit that F sharp 
two times. Okay, so hit that F sharp twice. So here we go again, a little faster. One more time. To our riff. stuff. Love this song. So that is our intro here. I'm going to take some questions. I'm going to show you the little riff that's at the very, very end of the intro, and then we'll get on to the verses. Okay, so let's see. What are some shows that you guys are bummed you missed? Ooh, Al <laughs> Alan in Montreal missed ELO. Oh no, what a bummer. That's a bummer. I gave, oh, Chuck. Chuck. Oh, I feel from you. Hello from Montana, Chuck. I gave away fourth row tickets to see David Gilmore. Ouch. Oh, no. Well, I hope you got to see him another time. Oh, that one hurts my heart. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Chuck. Oh, let's see. Tom, two concerts I regret missing are Ozzy and Leon Russell. I'm thankful I got to see Leon Russell before, before he left us. He was, he was fantastic. Oh, I still can't get over the David Gilmore one. Oh my God. <laughs> oh man. Ray Charles, Troy, yeah. Ray's, incre Ray's incredible. Oh. Hello from Illinois, I missed an Angela Petrilli show. Oh, what a bummer. <laughs> There's gonna be more shows, guys, don't worry. You wanna stay up to date on my, this is a, this is a perfect segue. If you guys wanna stay up to date on shows that I'm doing, uh, you can go to angelapetrillimusic.com and you can check out places where I'll be playing. Those of you in Austin, I will be in town October 27th, 2021. I'll be playing at the Pershing East for a really fun event. So those of you in Austin, I'll put a, I'll put a ticket link in the, in the comments of this video um, after we're done here today and, and you guys can snag some tickets. But yeah, those of you in Austin, swing by and come say hello. There's gonna be a meet and greet, a Q and A, all that good stuff. All that good stuff, it's gonna be a lot of fun. All right, let's see. Let, let me find let me find two more missed concert shows. Don't worry, I'll come back to these later in the show. Um, oh man, keep keep writing, folks. We want to know what are shows that you gave away tickets to or you're bummed you missed. Oh, David Gilmer, man, that's a bummer. Um, oh, Greg Allman, that's a bummer. Hello from Pittsburgh. Passed on Greg Allman. And you'll miss Larkin Poe tomorrow. Oh, okay. Larkin Poe's great. What a great band they are. <laughs> Good stuff, guys. Good stuff, guys. All right, you got him. We got another Pink Floyd. Someone else missed out on Pink Floyd. Ah, uh, well, there's lots of there's lots of great shows. Keep them, <laughs> keep them coming, folks. Oh man. Um. All right. Oh, and then someone missed out on Yes, and that. Oh, okay. There's more. There's more. I'll get to them. I'll get to them later on in the show. These are great, guys. Okay. So let's get on to the last little bit of that intro. It's gonna be this. A very simple, beautiful, yet very chimey riff. Let's go ahead and talk about how we do it. Let me see. Let me see how I wanna teach this. Let's do it that way. All right, so what we're gonna do here, you're gonna get your second finger. You're gonna place that on the fourth fret of that B string. So since we are in the key of E major, I'm calling this note D sharp, okay? And then I'm sliding up to E on that fifth fret of the B string. Now, keep that E string, the high E string chiming, okay? See how I plucked it once and then I slide it? That's what I want you guys to do too. Then go right back, like that. I'll see. You could use your second finger to get there too, either your first or your second. You could use your second or your first. <laughs> okay, so here's what we're gonna do. I'm liking the second finger, we're using that. Okay, so second finger, put that on the fourth fret of that G string, okay? That's gonna be your B note. And notice how, like when we're tuning our guitar. Okay, we're getting those nice G 
chimey, chimey octaves there. Okay, so let's do that nice and slow here. notes ring. Now, if you want to add a little more depth to that, right, you've got that E chord that's ringing. Right? So keep that, keep that in your thoughts too, again, to add a lot more depth to it. And that's what they do in the song as well. They really let the sustain of that E chord ring. And it's a nice, delicate little riff. And then they do this sort of palm mute. Now, again, here's the hand. With palm muting, we never want to press. Because then it sounds like that. We don't want that. Don't press. Just lightly put those fingers on top of the strings. And then just give it a good, with your right hand, down, up, down. Because if I press, it sounds like that. That we don't want. That we don't want. Nice press. Then go to your E chord for the verse. Okay? So we've got this. See how we did that? I'll do that a little bit slower here. And notice that too, what I just did there, is I, I, I hybrid picked that. If you want to do that too, if you like the sound of that a little bit better than just using the pick, I will leave that up to you. Some days, like when I play this live, I'll do it picked. And some days I'll alternate pick. So I encourage you guys, again, I'm planting the seeds with these lessons, right? I want to give you guys ideas on how to play these songs and explore them and have fun and incorporate them into your playing. So see, see about that. If you like the hybrid pick better, if you like the pick better, I'm gonna leave that up to you, okay? Giving you guys options, all right? So there's our riff. I'm gonna hybrid pick it. Then to our chord, okay? Palm mute, or not palm mute, just like a scratch, I guess. To that E major, okay? Again. One more time. Now, we go into the verse, guess what? Same chords as the intro, no problem. We know these already. And same strumming pattern here too. So that's that part. So that's what's happening there. Just a back and forth between those two chords. Okay, so back and forth with that, great. And this is for the first verse. And the second verse that we're gonna do a little bit later, there's another riff that we're gonna add in there, but we'll, we'll talk about that when we get there, so. Now, we're leading into our chorus. So the chorus here goes like this. All right, octaves. Some of my favorite stuff to use on guitar, like playing notes and all that good stuff. Really, really fun. So let's talk about this. Gonna take a little technique. This is gonna take a little practice. My beginners, my intermediates, um, this is worth the effort, I promise. And you are worth the effort in learning how to do this great. So stick with me here, you can do this, all right? So you go ahead and go like this. We're gonna do an A sus two. And if you listen back to the live version, God, it is so beautifully done. 
It's a really beautiful open sus2 chord, sus4 chords. They're just awesome. So we find another sus2 chord here. We had one at the top with that C sharp sus2 over G sharp, right? In the intro and the verses. We're gonna see another one here at the chorus. This is gonna be A sus2, and here's how we play it. You're gonna get your second finger here. You're gonna place that on the second fret of that D string. So that's your E note, okay? And your third finger, you're gonna go ahead and put that on the A, which is on the second fret of the G string. So what you're gonna do here, strum these bottom five strings, okay? The A string downward, just like that, okay? So that's how we're gonna do that. Now, if you wanna do an upstroke, you can absolutely do that. I like to do that too when I play this. Just be sure to release right before you get to that E string, okay? Because we don't, we don't want that. Now, is it the end of the world if you hit this string? No, but let's, let's, let's try not to. Okay, if you need a little insurance, notice how I do this. I have my thumb just kind of over here, just kind of overhanging. I'm not pressing. I'm just keeping it there and it mutes it. So, little, little like secret on how I do that. Okay, so that's your upstroke. Now notice how we don't do it just straight, at least in this one. I really want to articulate all those notes, right? So how I do it, and I use the sound hole as, as a bit of a guide here. Notice if I were to cut the sound hole in half, right? It's like a C or like a half moon. So when I do that upstroke, see how it's kind of like a, like a half moon too? Like that, and then release. This will take a little bit of practice, but again, you can totally do this. You can totally do this. Like that. All right, let's go ahead and do that. And release. And the closer you get to here, notice. It gets really like harpy and beautiful. Closer to the sound hole you get, obviously it's gonna be a little louder. So again, I'm planting the seeds here, whatever sounds good to you guys, all right? So we're gonna do that upstroke. Coming to our octaves here, let's talk about them. They go like this. That's the first set. So let's go ahead and talk about these. Now, since we are in the key of E, this note here on that sixth fret of the A string, I'm calling D sharp because E is already taken since we're in the key of E. I can't call it E flat, I'm calling it D sharp. Okay, then we go to, oh, well, let's talk about, let's talk about where to put your fingers. You're like, hold on, Angela, too fast. <laughs> let's go ahead and show you where to do it. Get your first finger, put that on the sixth fret of the A string, okay? Get your pinky here, and I want you to put that on the eighth fret of the G string. This is also that D sharp. How do we know? If you play these two together, they should be octaves because we're playing octaves, okay? Now, how do we ensure that we don't do this? Because that's not what we want to do. That's not, a, that's not cool. It could be cool in some other songs, right? But we want nice, clean, isolated notes there. Notice what I'm doing with these two fingers here, my second and third. What are they doing? They're muting. Okay, so just like we did here, before we went to the top of the verse, right? We're gonna do that same sort of thing except with our second and third finger, okay? You're going to just place them on the strings. You are not going to press. We are not playing a chord with these two fingers. They are acting as mutes for us, okay? So this is going to take some practice. Notice how straight my fingers are. Again, I've been doing this for a bit, and when I was first learning this stuff, my fingers were just like all over the place. Like, what, you're telling me I gotta keep them flat? Keep them flat, this is going to take some time. Be gentle with yourself when you are learning this. Be patient, I promise it is worth the effort here. I promise, I promise, I promise. So, placing that pinky, right? Eighth fret, of that G string, that first finger on the sixth fret of the A string. Place these there. I know for some of you, your fingers may wanna bend but work towards keeping them flat and just laying across those strings, okay? You can do this. So, lucky for us, we're not gonna change the shape, we're just gonna move it around, okay? This again will take some practice, but we're gonna I'm gonna walk you through it, okay? So we have that A sus2 chord, or downstroke, 
right? You're gonna go down, up, down, up. Okay, on that D sharp. Then to E, down, up, down, up. Slide that up, a half step only. So your first finger should be on the seventh fret of the A string and your pinky finger should be on the ninth fret of the G string. Those are both your E notes. And if you don't believe me, hear that one and hear that one. They're all the same, <laughs> okay? So we've got this. Sixth fret, seventh fret. It's where that D sharp and E are, okay? And the pinky finger, eighth fret, ninth fret of that G string. So let's go ahead and do that again nice and slowly here. Okay. Now what we're gonna do here is you're gonna slide this up a whole step to the F sharp. First finger should be on that ninth fret of the A string. Your pinky finger should be on the 11th fret of the G string, okay? So here we go. Again, same strumming pattern, same shape, different notes. Here we go. And also too, I wanna to mention, notice how you cannot see my thumb here. I want that thumb in the middle of the neck, okay? It's acting as our nice guide behind the scenes, okay? Making sure that our, our hands are stretched properly, our fingers are curled properly, all of that good stuff here, okay? So keep that thumb at the back of the neck, okay? So when you're doing this, if your thumb is up here, it's gonna be really, really hard to play these octaves. So keep that thumb at the back of the neck, okay? So here we go again. Let's go ahead and do that three more times. too bad, right? Now what we're going to do here, and again, we're playing the chorus here. Let's go ahead and now incorporate that A sus2 with this octave run. Okay, so here we go. Again, I know it's quite a jump going from that second fret all the way to the sixth fret. As I say in these lessons, you can't play anything fast that you can't play slow. So take your time. What's great about these, these are on YouTube all the time. You can go rewind. Wait, how'd you do that again? This and this and this. I'm here to help you guys. I'm here to help you guys. So again, slow and steady wins the race here. Take your time. Good technique is what we're looking for here. Okay, we're not worried about chasing the clock. Let's worry about good technique. So here we go again. So that's the first octave run that we have in that A chord sequence, okay? So here's the second one. All right, leading up to that E chord, which will follow afterwards. So if I play both, here's how they sound. A sus two chord. So what's this? What am I doing? We're playing the C sharp. Fourth fret of that A string, sixth fret of that G string. Again, using those mutes of the second and third fingers. Same strumming pattern too, okay? So let's go ahead and do that a few times at varying speeds. Here we go. One more time for good luck at this pace, then we'll go ahead and speed it up. All right, 
not too bad. Take your time with this. You guys can do it. All right, so here we go a little bit faster. All right, not too bad, not too bad. So after this section, we go to our E chord and we do this octave sequence. Let's go ahead and talk about how we play this one. So, E chord this time. We're gonna go ahead and do that again, that D sharp to E to F sharp, just like we did at the top of, of, of our A sequence of, of octaves, okay? So this is how it's gonna sound. Notice, same strumming, strumming pattern too, folks. Okay, let's go ahead and do that again a little slower. Remember those mutes? Okay, so that's what's happening there. Now, the new one looks and sounds like this, the second one. That a little cleaner. All right, let's talk about it. So you've got your E chord. We're jumping all the way to this F sharp at the ninth fret of that A string, 11th fret of that G string. So again, like that. And again, down, up, down, up. Okay, we bring this up a whole step. to G sharp, 11th fret of that A string, 13th fret of the D string. Don't worry, this is about the highest we're gonna go on the guitar in this song, the highest on the fretboard. So those of you who don't have a cutaway acoustic, like mine right now, um, totally doable, totally doable. You can play it, <laughs> okay? So we've got that G sharp, then you're gonna go to that D sharp. 6th fret of the A string, 8th fret of the G string, G is in go, our D sharps, okay? So now, let's go ahead, go through the E chord and the two octave runs that we have on that chord, okay? So here we go, I'm gonna take it slow, and then I'll do it a little bit faster, and then I'm gonna combine both parts for the chorus. And then what I will also do is include some other chords and then I'll talk about maybe a beginner one if those of you who are watching are like, oh my God, I just can't do the octaves yet, no problem. I'm gonna give you an option too, okay? So here we go. I slid there from that F sharp to the G sharp. If you want to do that too, that works. Instead of like that. Kind of sounds cool too. So I'll leave that up to you. All right, so here we go. without that little added slide. So again, up to you, whatever you're feeling, they both sound really cool. So whatever you're feeling that day. All right, so now what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna combine the A chord or the A sus2 chord with those two octave parts and then the E chord with its two octave parts. Okay, so here we go.
So that's what's happening there. Now, on the acoustic version, what they do is this. Right at the end of those octaves. Now on the electric version, we get that. So, both are cool. I like them both. So what I'll do is I will do a pass with the octaves with just the F sharp minor to an A sus2. And then I'll do another pass with the riff. Because the riff is based along those two chords as well. Okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll give you guys both options. So here's option one with the chords at the, at, at the back. Okay, so here we go. cool. Now here's the one with the riff. That gives you guys two options. Now, my beginners are looking at the octaves and they're like, Angela, this is too much right now. No problem, build up to this, go back to this video when you feel comfortable and feel ready to look at those octaves, great. Now, if you just wanna play chords over this and not do the octaves, all you would do is your A sus2, so that there goes my hero, and just hold that. Watch him as he goes, and there's E major, strum it. Even doing up strong, right? A sus two and E. And then your F sharp minor. So that A sus two. Okay. Or if you want to do the riff, you can do the riff too. Alright? So pretty neat. So that's what's happening there. Super fun song to play. So glad you guys are loving these, uh, loving this song today. This is one of my, one of my favorites to play. So I'm glad you guys are liking it too. All right. So as far as the end, so we have that, and then you've got that riff that we did at the very, very top. Okay, or at least at the very, very top of the intro. All right, and that's how we do that. So you can go back in the lesson, watch the rewind. And that's how we do that one, okay? So let's go ahead and do this next. I see questions here. I'm gonna answer a few of those right now. We're gonna get to verse two. We're gonna do another fun little riff. And then pretty much, we're pretty much there, folks. This has been a super fun one to teach. So glad you guys are. So glad you guys are enjoying this too. I always have so much fun with these, so this is great. Um, we have folks asking about this particular Martin that I am playing today. This is a triple O 17 E Martin. I love it. It's got my Fishman pickups in there too. I have the Matrix uh, Enhance in here and I just love them. So uh, those are the pickups I have in here as far as strings go. I've got people asking about string gauge here. I just have 12s. Uh, Daddario NYXL lights are the strings that I am using here. As far as preamp stuff is concerned, using my Fishman R Spectrum DI, the silver box that I talk about in all my acoustic lessons. I do not leave the house without it at an electric gig. It's great. And then as far as amplification is concerned, the Fishman Loudbox Performer is what is being mic'd up uh, here today. And then just, you know, your, your basic and trusty SM57 is being mic'd that out. And then, yeah, I'm going through logic to all of you guys all over the world. Thank you so, so much for being here. Again, I will leave, uh, 
I'll leave links so you guys can see all the cool gear that I am using today to, 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 to play this for you guys today and teach you guys how to play this song. Super good stuff. All right, so, so let's see again. I'm gonna ask those of you who are new, who have, who have just joined, uh, if you're digging these lessons, by all means, go and subscribe on YouTube to my channel, Angela Petrilli Music. I do these every Saturday at 12 p.m. Pacific time. I, I, I take an hour and teach you guys how to play a tune. So be sure to subscribe, tell a friend, spread the word. It's good stuff. It's good stuff indeed. So, so let's, uh, yeah, let's go ahead. I wanna take some more of your comments here. I asked at the top of the hour, those of you who, uh, I always like to, to know where you're, where you're tuning in from and <laughs> if you guys gave away tickets to a concert that you're really bummed that you had to give away tickets to or that you just, you couldn't make it. I wanna hear, I wanna hear those stories. I wanna hear those stories. So I'm gonna read a few cause there are a couple more. We had some good ones at the top of the hour. So I'm gonna take a few minutes here um, to read some more of those. Oh my gosh, someone missed Led Zeppelin. Oh no. Oh no, what a bummer. And then, oh, Jefferson Starship. Oh, that's a bummer. I'm, I'm, my, my buddy Jude's in that band. He's a great guy. If you're watching, Jude, hope you're well, my friend. Oh, love it, guys. Love it. Yeah, that's, that's a huge bummer. Missing Zeppelin. That is a huge bummer. Someone missed the Foo Fighters. Oh, that's a bummer. They're a great show. I saw them when they were in um, L.A. a few weeks ago. They were just fantastic. They're awesome. All right. Again, that's a, that's a bummer. That's a bummer. Ah, Tom Petty. He's, he's someone I wished I had seen live. I haven't, I, I've never got to see Tom Petty live. Uh, yeah. Again, let me know, folks. Concerts that you're bummed that you missed. I want to hear about it. Okay, so let's go ahead and go into verse two of this. I'm giving you two different options for this. Like, I felt like I heard it two different ways. I'm gonna give you a level one and a level two. Okay, so level one would sound something like this. So you're gonna hear this at the top of verse two if you go back and listen to the live version that I am basing this lesson on. It's on the Skin and Bone, uh, yeah, the Skin and Bones album, Live of the Pantages in Los Angeles, a show that I am bummed that I missed. Uh, <laughs> so it's gonna go something like this. Right, you have those chords up there? It's this. Okay, so that's gonna be my level one because I'm hearing one guitar do that and I'm hearing a guitar doing what I'm gonna call level two. So, here's how we're gonna do that. Get your first finger here, place that on that D sharp, okay? Fourth fret of that B string. And you're gonna hammer onto the E on that fifth fret. And then you're gonna go back. Just like that. And notice, I am alternate picking here. If you do this, it doesn't flow as nicely. Listen. Versus. Hear the difference? Again, I, I, I like the flowiness of alternate picking, so. Do that a little slower. Now the next part. Grab that with your pinky. I grabbed it with my third, but it's better technique if you do it with your pinky, okay? Go to the seventh fret of that B string, okay? That's gonna be your F sharp. So from that D sharp, go to that F sharp. Like that. Back to that D sharp. Second finger hits the E fifth fret B string. So this is our level one. Okay. 
so that's what's happening there. Let's do it a little faster. So that's about the droniness, okay? So if you wanna do like an added level, say like 1.5, add the E string underneath it. So it'd be like this. Okay, so you can do it that way too. Try not to hit the G string, because it doesn't sound too good. Don't do that. <laughs> okay, so level two here, again, top of verse two. Uh, let's see, how do I, how do I write this out? It sounds like this. Where we get right, that droniness, not only of the E string, but of the B string too. We're playing the same notes, but we're playing them on different parts of the neck. It's pretty neat. So what you're gonna do here, slide, and again, this is a level two, get your first finger, slide that from the eighth fret of that G string to that E on the ninth fret, okay? And let these ring. Okay, again, nice droniness. So we'll call this level two. Not beautiful. I just love that. And again, it sounds like one of the other guitar players is doing that. Either, either Chris or Pat. I don't know who was doing it, but. Either one of them. It's a great little riff. And let that ring. Getting that pinky 11th fret of that G string, that's our F sharp. Second finger, ninth fret of that G string, that's going to be our E, okay? So again, nice and slow here. So, as I did there, right, playing all that, you might have heard an occasional D string being open. Try not to do that, okay? So let's do that again a little faster. Don't play that D string. <laughs> Now, this is being played over that E and that C sharp, right? Our C sharp sus chord. So you have that. So think about these little parts here, these little riffs as a secondary guitar part, right? Say you're playing with someone and you go, hey, you play these chords and I'll play this riff. So again, why don't you guys like play with other people too? It's super, super fun. So go ahead and you know incorporate these in the tune too. Really, really fun stuff. So what happens here? That's verse two, right? With those added riffs now. I'll go back. Here's level one. Level 1.5, where we add the droning E on the bottom. Level 2 with the droning B string and E string on the bottom, starting at the 8th fret of that G string. So again, giving you guys different options for this stuff. It's, oh, it's such a fun song to play. So let's see here. So that's what's happening there. We go back to our chorus, right, with our octaves. Or if you want to do a level one, just stick to the chords. Totally cool, too. 
And again, nice big sustain, right? Go ahead and do that to our ending riff. Or F sharp minor to A sus2. Okay, so that's what's happening there. Now, what's next? In the live version, there's a really, really beautiful piano break. What's he playing over? Rami's just playing over the E and that C sharp, right? That sus chord doing some really tasty, beautiful stuff. You guys, you should listen to it. It's really, really great. So. And then they do this thing where it starts to build, right? So it, 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 to my ear, it's sounding like this. Going from that E to that D sharp. And they do this kind of bend thing, which is super cool and totally foo fightery. It's great. So how I'm doing that, I'm just doing the octaves here. So I'm going from E at the seventh fret of the A string with my pinky, then on the ninth fret of the G string. And then I'm taking that back a half step to that D sharp. Building. Do your best to pull it down. Now, if this is too much on your hands, don't worry. This is something that you can exclude, but it is kind of cool if you can pull it off, literally. Now, you don't want to bend it too much. Notice how I'm bending it ever so slightly, and you can kind of see it here on the fretboard too, if you notice. So, and it does that. So you just want to pull down, not too much. Keep those fingers curled though. And I, I, I don't want you to, I don't want you to get any, you know, tension in that wrist. So just less is more here. So it sounds like you're just going out of tune. And then we go to that, that bridge, which again is that E. So that So right there. So it goes back again to that, to our one chord, then to our six chord. Okay. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna play the whole song so far because we're, I can't believe that. And this hour like absolutely flew by. I hope you guys had as much fun as I did. This has been so fun to teach today. I'm gonna go ahead and do the whole thing thus far. And yeah, we're like, this is it guys. Pretty much did the whole thing. This, is, this has been great. So I'm gonna start it from the top. All right, and I'm gonna play it to speed. riffs in verse two. Version 1.5. Version two. Now, 
We're going to go to chorus two. octaves. Get to that E bend. Bridge. Now from here, we go to another chorus with the octaves, okay? Then at the end of this final chorus, and let that ring. So our riff. And then let that ring through. That's the tune, guys. That's my hero by the Foo Fighters. I hope you guys liked it. Dave, you did arrive late, but no problem. You can watch this live on YouTube anytime you want. You can go ahead and watch the replay. Amongst many others, this is the 33rd episode of the Riff Rundown with the awesome folks at Fishman. Cannot thank them a lot, enough for, for helping me do these awesome lessons and making everything sound so good and all that stuff. So kudos to the guys at Fishman. Just so, so thankful to all of them for, for helping me do this. This has been such a blast. So again, I'm wishing you guys so much success here. Again, this is a live Q&A too, but if you guys put questions in the comments after the video is over, I will do my best to answer a few of those as well. So if you guys have questions afterwards, I do read comments from time to time. So if you guys got questions about stuff, I would absolutely love to help out in post as well. Again, if you guys are enjoying these lessons, be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel, Angela Petrilli Music, and Share a video with a friend, spread the word. It helps the cause. It's, it's good stuff and it, it, it really makes me feel great to help you guys learn how to play. And there's folks from all over the world. It is just such a joy. Again, those of you who are in the Austin area, I will be playing live at the Pershing East. I'll be doing a Q and A meet and greet, playing some tunes there, October 27th, 2021, Pershing East in Austin, Texas. I will leave a link for tickets if you guys want to come by and say hello and hang out with us bring earplugs because man is it going to be loud i'm going to bring my strat that's going to be really really great so it's going to be a lot of fun again i'm on facebook youtube twitter instagram all of that good stuff you can find me on there and again wishing you so much success i will see you guys next week same time same channel saturdays 12 p.m pacific doing another tune it's going to be a lot of fun it's, it's just so, so great to be here. So thank you all so much. Probably going to be doing another acoustic tune next week. So have your acoustic guitars ready. Again, thank you all so much. Uh, thanks so much for the love and all that stuff. Wishing you much, much success. So I will see you next week, everybody. Take good care. 